All right, it's Mayo here from Chat with Data, and uh, today I'm here with Jerry Liu, uh, co-founder of Llama Index. Llama Index is a simple, flexible framework, a development tool that makes it easier uh, to build uh, AI applications. I'll let Jerry introduce himself in a second. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at the use cases where you've got tons of documents with tons of tables in the document and you want to be able to chat with the tables embedded in your document. So uh, without further ado, uh, Jerry, you can jump in. Great. Hey, everyone. Uh, Jerry, a co-founder and CEO of Llama Index here. And today we're excited to tackle a specific use case of advanced RAG. Uh, so parsing embedded tables and being able to query those within uh, a complex document. Um, as well as being able to jointly query that with other um, questions you might ask about the rest of the text as well. So to um, frame this, a lot of documents contain not only text, but also tables. Um, an example here as shown is, is the world's billionaires page on Wikipedia, where it shows a bunch of tables per year of the billionaires per year. Um, on a slightly more practical use case, for instance, in financial analysis, uh, a 10K document, the SEC 10K, also contains uh, a variety of different tables uh, and, and a variety of different formats along with text. And so um, as we think about complex documents such as these that contain a mix of both tabular as well as um, unstructured text data, it's very interesting to think about where, for instance, like naive RAG actually fails. So if you, the, the current like basic RAG stack is that you actually split text into a bunch of like chunks. Uh, it could be even chunks, it could be by sections, but you basically collapse it into some sort of flat list of different chunks. And what happens is that you embed each chunk. So for instance, on, the, on this picture, you might like embed like the legend right here. Uh, you might embed this chunk. You might embed this entire table as is. And then you might generate an embedding for each chunk. The issue is that, um, and then, and then once you embed each chunk, you put it into a vector database and you do stuff like top K retrieval from this database uh, when a user asks a question. The issue here is that a lot of times embedding like tables themselves as just like as is, as plain text, leads to really bad retrieval results. And, and we'll show you in just a bit. Um, and so you want like a different way of actually modeling your tables such that you can still semantically retrieve the tables when it actually is relevant to the user question um, but you can actually uh, go in and find the precise uh, numbers within the table given the user query. So let me show you an example of the architecture that we've set up within Llama Index to help you actually do this advanced RAG approach. And the solution here is you basically model data hierarchically. So given um, some sort of PDF with a mix of both text as well as embedded tabular data, what you can do is that First, you know, take the set of like different um, uh, different document sections. So, for instance, you might have like a text chunk. Uh, you might have a text chunk here, and then here you might have like an embedded table. It says SQL database. Uh, let's not worry about that for now. But let's just pretend like this part is an embedded table, right? And so, what you can do is like you can actually map each one of these to a node. For a given text chunk, this can just uh, the text here can just directly translate into the text that's used for a node. But for a table, you can actually extract out, for instance, like a summary of the table and then uh, map that as the text in the node. The node is an uh, object representation within Llama Index that represents the thing that's actually embedded, uh, a unit of data that's embedded and stored in a vector database. And so you're going to be embedding and storing raw text chunks, but you're also going to be embedding and storing summaries from these tables. Now, when the user actually asks a question, um, and you first retrieve uh, from the vector database based on the nodes itself. So you might get back a mix of nodes that correspond to you know, the raw text, uh, as well as some nodes that correspond to the summary of the tables. What we do is you can now recursively retrieve the chunks and query the chunks. And we call this in Llama Index recursive retrieval, which means that you know, if the node just contains raw text, then you're, you're done. You know, it's the same as uh, uh, regular RAG. But if the node actually contains a reference to an underlying table, you can then go in and then query the table instead. So it's like a indirect reference to the table as opposed to embedding and, and retrieving the table directly. 
And we see that this leads to much better results. And we'll also show you some qualitative examples in the notebook. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Let's zoom in. So here, um, we'll walk you through an, an advanced RAG use case, uh, parsing a complex document with embedded tables, and how to handle that in Lama Index. Um, and then we'll compare this against a naive RAG stack using top pair retrieval with a fixed chunk size. We'll show actually two examples, uh, one with the billionaires page uh, right here. I'll go into this in just a bit. And another with a Tesla uh, 10Q document, which is a quarterly filing. Um, we can go through and, and first just run the setup. Um, here, I think everything's already run. And um, if you're seeing the OpenAI key, it's already been disabled, so, so don't worry. Um, <clears throat> we just define some basic uh, styling, imports, those things. OK, let's first talk about the initial use case um, with uh, parsing embedded tables within the billionaires page. And let's take a look at what this page actually is. Here, um, you can see this is a PDF print of the Wikipedia page of the world's billionaires. It contains a variety of texts right here. And it also contains a bunch of tables. Um, it actually contains a set of tables uh, of corresponding to like billionaires for each year. Um, so here is like 2023, and here is the billionaires in 2023. You know, Bernard Arnault, Elon, Jeff, 2022, so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of tables in here. And actually, there's also one table at the end, um, right around here or so. That's a slightly different table. It contains, it's basically the number and combined net worth of billionaires by year, right? So for each year, you see the number of billionaires as well as the combined net worth. So now that you have a sense of what this document is, let's try um, parsing it, right? Parsing the tables out from that document um, and then asking various questions about the document. And just to highlight our point, we'll compare this against kind of a more naive RAG approach just to see what questions we can answer. Um, here, you know, you pip install some, some required packages. We'll define the import. Um, the document's just stored in our Dropbox, so you can basically run this yourselves. Uh, the Colab notebook should be shared in the video description. Um, and then you initialize the PDF reader right here. Um, here, the billionaires, um, the billionaires page is already stored locally. So we, all we do is we reload it. And what we do is we use a uh, PyMu PDF reader. Once we actually load the text, um, we're also going to be using a package here called Camelot. Um, and Camelot is actually a special package uh, that's designed to just like parse out tables from, from a PDF document. In the next example, uh, we'll actually show unstructured, um, which is a, a, a kind of like all in one. Um, here we use Camelot, and it works very well when it, there's like kind of clean tables to parse. So that's just something I think about. In general, you have a lot of different choices in terms of how you actually do table extraction from PDFs. Um, and that's something that we're also actively exploring and, and kind of trying to make better as well. Um, Camelot, as I said, works well when there's like clean tables to parse. And the billionaires page shows a lot of pretty clean tables. And what it does is when you actually call read PDF, it extracts out a list of tables and stores it in a data frame representation. So it's actually quite convenient because it just directly parses it into a pandas data frame. So we'll define this function. Um, extract out a set of table PDFs. Here you see, you know, we, we focus on a few pages just to start with. Um, and you can see that, you know, uh, if we take a look at just like the first, um, the first table that's parsed, here we see a list of like top billionaires in 2023, right? Um, and, and this is exactly the table that it showed, but this is the parse list of the billionaires in 2023. And then the second table that's extracted here, uh, just for this example, is that table that I showed at the end, which is the uh, number of billionaires and the combined net worth uh, or order by year. So you see it's very structured data, right? And the question is, how do I combine, you know, I, I want to represent these tables in the same, um, along with the rest of the text and ask questions over this entire document. So how do I actually do that? 
what we can do is we're going to build like a pandas query engine for each table. Uh, and a pandas query engine is a specific query engine for a table that can basically query that table via uh, pandas code. So for instance, you know, we're going to do this. And for this first table of the billionaires in 2023, if you ask, you know, like what's the net worth of the second richest billionaire in 2023, you'll get back an answer, which is 180 billion, which corresponds to this answer right here, right, Elon. What it's doing under the hood, it's actually writing just like pandas operations in terms of uh, like the Python code, basically, um, to query this pandas data frame. Um, so the way, it, so so importantly, the way it queries and, and returns a result is different than your, uh, you know, traditional rag stack, at least for this specific table, um, because it, it is it is structured data as opposed to unstructured. But now that we have, you know, a query engine for each table, let's do the thing that we talked about, which is compose this into some sort of hierarchical graph and run recursive retrieval. And we wanted to find this like top level vector index that can vector index a set of nodes. And for each table, we actually want to extract out a summary from each table and then index and embed that, right? So everything is kind of jointly embedded in index. Here, um, we just use, you know, GPT-4. Um, of course, OpenAI Dev Day just happened. And so you have options uh, in terms of using like GPT-4 Turbo or the revamp 3.5 Turbo models as well. What we're going to do here is we're first just going to um, uh, get the set of chunks from the loaded document, right? And then what we're going to do is, in addition, we're going to add in the summaries of each uh, table. You can do this automatically. And in the example right below this, we'll show you how to actually do this automatically. Uh, but in this example, we'll show you, you know, um, this node provides information about the world's richest billionaires in 2023. That's the first table. And then the second table is this node provides information on the number of billionaires and their combined net worth from 2000 to 2023. We're going to define what we call like an index node, which is basically a reference to the underlying table, right? And it's mapped by an ID. And so each one of these summaries uh, has a link to the underlying data frame that, that it came from. So this is what we mean by like defining a summary of, of the node. And again, we'll show you how, to, uh, like in the, in the example below, we'll do it automatically. Um, and then we'll construct like a top level vector index that contains the document nodes, which are just the text chunks, plus the data frame nodes containing the summaries. And we'll define what we call like a, a vector retriever, right? Which is just the top K vector retriever. Um, in this case, we set the top K equals a one. Um, you're free to kind of set the top K value to whatever makes sense. Um, and um, the way it works is uh, when when you retrieve the top K most relevant nodes, uh, it's you'll recursively retrieve the, the links to those nodes to see if there's anything underneath that you want to query. This next section, we set up the recursive retriever. So basically what we define here is we want to define, here is the root ID, the thing that we start with. Um, the retriever dict uh, corresponds to any sort of retrievers that you want to um, basically define. And, and so here we just have the top level vector retriever. The query engine dict uh, defines the any mapping from kind of a given uh, node ID uh, to a query engine that you want to define. And because we define a bunch of pandas query engines, right, corresponding to the underlying tables, we pass that mapping as a variable here. The recursive retriever, like in terms of retrieving um, or given a user query, will just return you a set of relevant nodes, right? It'll just return you a set of relevant contexts. And so because like, you know, given a question, you basically want the this entire pipeline to just generate a result for you, uh, you still want to do some synthesis over the retrieve results. Uh, we still want to define what we call like a response synthesizer, right? Which uses the LLM to actually generate an answer for you. And then we compose both the recursive retriever as well as the response synthesizer as part of this retriever query engine, which is uh, represents kind of like the full uh, RAG pipeline. So this sets up the recursive retriever powered RAG pipeline. Right? 
Um, and if it hits the retrieval process, it'll do that recursive retrieval that we just mentioned. And we'll compare this against a baseline retrieval, a retriever that does top K lookup over the raw docking. And we can actually, you know, compare results between the recursive retriever versus the baseline retriever. First, we'll ask our recursive retriever query engine, um, how many billionaires were there in 2009? You can see in the logs that it first retrieves the node with what we call uh, pandas one. And this pandas one corresponds to the second table right here. Like this, this node provides information on the number of billionaires and their combined net worth. So it's fetching the right table, um, right? Because it, it fetches the summary that corresponds to the table. And then it goes into the table and then asks how many billionaires were there in 2009? And then you get back a response, 793. Because once it goes into this table, it hits the pandas query engine. And then the pandas query engine executes this query against a pandas data frame through writing pandas code. If we take a look at the page again, you know, just to, just to double check, here it says 793, 2009. It seems like it's returning the right answer. Now, in contrast, let, let's try the, the baseline uh, query engine, right? And this is just through. That the way this works is we just like chunk up the entire document like rag style, right? Without actually thinking about the embedded tables inside it, we just treat it as raw text. Um, so we don't uh, have any special treatment for the tables. And we ask this question. It says based on the context information, it's not possible to determine the exact number of billionaires. Um, we can take a look, right, at, at like one of the sources. Um, and if we take a look at one of the sources, it goes into a piece of text um, that basically represents, like if you take a look at this, this basically represents a flattened list of uh, one of like the, the, the first few tables, right? In fact, if I, I, I can look for this right now. Okay, it fetches the some part in the 2018 um, session. So it actually hallucinates. Let's try another question. What is the average age of the top five billionaires in, in 2023? Right. Here, right, we like here in this example, it's a toy example. We, we have like uh, two tables. Um, one represents uh, the 2023 table. The other represents like a stack list of like a uh, uh, number of billionaires per year. And here we see the enters panda zero, which, which is the first table. It is the table representing the 2023 billionaires. And then we ask, what is the average age of top five billionaires in 2023? Um, and we get back response 70.8. It's actually running like some sort of basic structured query, right, on this table right here. The 2023 table takes this like um, uh, the, the, the top five billionaires, right, um, and then averages their ages. In contrast, if we ask this question to the, the, the baseline, um, was the average age of top top five? You see, it, it gives you back the, the wrong answer, um, and and you can uh, verify this for yourself by by looking at the table. Of course, like maybe just to, just to double check, like this recursive retriever query engine um, can answer general questions about the text too, right? The the whole demonstration was that it can answer questions about specific tables in the text, but it can also just answer general questions about the test, uh, like uh, a text. Like, let's say we ask, how is wealth accounted for in recipients if the billionaire is deceased? Um, this is uh, a section, right, um, in the text here that says, if a deceased billionaire's fortune has been dispersed, it will not appear as a single listing. And it's just part of the overall text of the document. And you still get back an answer, right? This basically just, um, regurgitates what's what, what's in the text. Uh, and of course, the vector query engine, like the baseline rag pipeline can, can answer this as well, because it's just a question about the text and not about a specific table. So, so that's a toy example, right? And, and maybe just as a second part of this uh, uh, tutorial, we'll go on to something slightly more uh, complex, like a, a messier document format, right? Parsing tables within a 10, 10Q document, um, not a 10K. Um, and so 
We'll use unstructured. Uh, it's a powerful library that kind of like is able to parse out text, images, and, and tables from a given document. And I'll extract it in a bit of like a, a messier format. Uh, sorry, I'm I this is a 10k document. Uh 10q. I'm gonna go change this. Okay. So um we have all the imports already installed just for the sake of time, but uh, the notebook should contain all the sections uh, for you to just like install these packages. And we're going to first extract out elements using unstructured, right? And it's going to be what we call partition HTML. We download the 10K filing as an HTML document, right? And, and so we stripped out most of the images, but you know, the, the, the tables and the text are intact. Um, and then what we can call, what we can do is we just like load in this document as uh, raw text, and we call what we call an unstructured element node parser. Um, this is actually a convenience abstraction that we built um, on top of unstructured, that basically extracts out the hierarchical graph that we just did somewhat manually with with Camelot. Um, so basically, extracting out this graph mapping from nodes. Um, and some nodes to text and some nodes to tables. And we do this with the help of the unstructured library. Uh, we've already parsed this. Um, the, the way it works is it extracts out like a set of like tables uh, and text. And for each table, it actually runs summarization using an LLM. Um, you can customize the LLM, of course. Uh, here, we've already have it loaded. And so we're just going to run this. And then um, it, now we have like this extracted graph. And then we define the mappings right here. Let's take a basic look at an example of a parsed out table. Right? And so here we're going to go through the extracted set of nodes, find one that actually corresponds to a table, and we'll show you what this table looks like. Um, we see that this table has the following metadata. Um, here it has like the set of extracted columns, the type, the net income weighted average shares. Um, and, and there's a lot of tables in the 10K document, and this is just one of them. And if I just expand this really quick, you can kind of see, um, you know, it's it's a bit, it's it's a little messy. Like there's some some text that's missing, but basically, you know, year ended December 31, 2021. Here you see like revenues, right? You see like cost of revenues, gross profit. This is basically one of the first tables in, in the 10K. And you can see a breakdown from 2021, 2020 to 2019. One concept here in terms of modeling these tables, in the previous example, we used, uh, we modeled it as um, uh, a pandas data frame. Here, because the table is uh, extracted is, is maybe like a little messy, right? And, and it's, not, um, it's not super uh, clean, uh, but also that because the table is pretty small, you can actually just represent the tables plain text. Um, it's not a bad option, especially with the reasoning capabilities of these models, um, is that if the table is small enough, uh, you could just represent it as this text, right? The key difference is like, you still want to actually embed the summary of this table as opposed to the table itself. Because uh, if you just embed this table that like, and you ask a relevant question, there's so much, so many numbers and stuff in here that like during retrieval, this table will probably not be retrieved for any question that's actually relevant to the table. Whereas if you actually summarize this table saying something like, you know, this table is for asking questions about like revenues, cost revenues, profit, that type of stuff, like income, loss, um, then, then you can actually get back some semantic representation that's more amenable, right, for retrieval. Similarly, as before, we'll kind of define this recursive retriever. Um, and here are the, the the whole like document hierarchy has already been handled for us via our node parser. Um, and what we're, we're basically doing the same thing as before, right? If we go back into this 10K document, uh, which is the Tesla 10K document, you can see, you know, there's a bunch of text. And let me see, where's the first table? Okay. And, and then for every table that exists within the document, um, that's just one example. Here are some other examples. Um, I think this is basically the extracted table. Um, it will extract this out as a separate node and, and, and map that hierarchically. So let's run some queries too. And um, we can try out some, some additional queries as well. Um, 
Uh, here we just start off with something really basic. What was the revenue in 2020? Which should be found in, in one of the tables that we just extracted. And we can see the revenue in 2020 was um, you know, about 30, 31, 31 billion. And then we can compare this against the baseline retriever, which is what is revenue in 2020? It's a very basic question, but you can see that even for the base, uh, the a very basic question such as this, when we define it, uh, when we call it with the baseline, right? You can see that like it doesn't actually give you the right information. So, and then we can go back into this page really quick just to verify. And you can see here um, total revenues 2020. Um, and and it, it first is able to fetch the relevant table, right? That contains uh, information about revenues. Um, and then here you see total revenues. Um, it, it does it does uh, retrieve the right answer. Great. I think that's basically it in terms of the demo. Um, some quick notes in terms of next steps. Um, one, this is a pretty basic. Um, uh, it's a, uh, sorry, may I just say something? No, 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 I'm listening. I'll, I'll ask you the questions oh, yeah. after this. Um, yeah, so just uh, some, some general things like this is just an initial demo. We highly encourage you to try out your own questions, right? Um, if you, we have a full Tesla, the uh, demo notebook in our docs as well. So for instance, you can ask stuff like, can you compare and contrast the cash flow in 2021 with 2020? Um, and, and you can actually not only ask a question over a single table, but actually across multiple tables. Um, if there's time, I can I can show that in, in like a video as well. But we have a lot of these examples in the docs where you can basically ask complex questions over a single document or multiple documents. Um, and and the other part is um, this is something that's still iterating on. And so I would, if you notice like any sort of hallucinations, um, there's a chance that this might be due to the table parsing algorithm itself. As you can see, the extracted table itself isn't is is not super clean quite yet. And this will is something that will inevitably get better over time. Um, and then, of course, the models and the retrieval algorithms will also get better. The last thing I'll say is that given OpenAI Dev Day, there's a lot of interest in multimodal right now. And I think right now it's an open question as to whether or not um, a table, like parsing embedded tables within a document like this use case, uh, is better served with multimodal or uh, with kind of like a text-based parsing. Um, and so we're excited to try that out, uh, especially with models like GPT-4V, Fuyu, Lava, we take a screenshot of the table, uh, ask a model to describe it, and see if that leads to better summaries versus just uh, passing in a raw text. Um, and so with that said, um, yeah, that's that's basically the demo. And the co-op link should be in the notebook. So uh, let me know if you have any questions in the, in the comments below. Yeah, we're going to share the collab uh, notebook below. But um, just some questions, Joe, based on what, what you've seen, what you've gone over. So the, the slides you showed initially, how do we tie the different parts of, um, cause you had the slide that had the, um, like the four nodes, I believe one, one node was, uh, four of them were uh, to split the text. Um, and I believe there was, um, yeah, that, that's great. So how does this image here translate to the code? So what I mean is how did these different components show up in the Llama index mm -hmm. abstractions? So um, in terms of specifically how these components show up, um, the, the way this works is that, so a node is a fundamental abstraction in Llama index. It basically uh, represents like a chunk of a document, um, but a, a node rep um, uh, contains, can contain relationships to other nodes. It can contain stuff like structured metadata uh, and of course it can contain like a reference to underlying like child nodes. And that's basically what we do here where like a node here contains, um, so for, for a text chunk, actually the node is just the text chunk. Um, maybe this, uh, diagram, like the, if you just imagine there's no arrow here and the text chunks is overlaid with a node, that's maybe a more accurate representation. Um, but for anything related to tables, what we do is a node contains the text, the text is a summary of the table. 
And this node also contains a reference to the underlying um, kind of query engine right. text or retriever that corresponds to the underlying table. So um, if we stay here for, for a second, what you're saying effectively is that we recursively check the chunks and then if mm -hmm. a given chunk just contains text, then we perform a normal rag. Um, mm -hmm. If a given chunk is a summary describing the table, then we perform the rest of the process, which you were going over. Exactly. And so at a high level, if a node contains a reference to another node, then, uh, or, or to another entity, and that entity could be like a query engine retriever, then we'll recursively go down into that entity as well. Um, it, so this, this is a very general concept that actually applies in, in a lot of cases too, because you can use this for modeling, for instance, like, um, uh, embedded tables and modeling that via summaries. Uh, you can also just do this um, to model general advanced RAG use cases. Like if you want to hierarchically model a document tree, like you model each document by its summary. And then um, uh, within the document, it's just like a retriever over the chunks within that document. So you can do something where you basically do a recursive retrieval over like, you know, this top set of nodes, which corresponds to document summaries. And then you go in and fetch relevant chunks for each document. Um, so there's a, a variety of use cases here. Yeah. So what, cause here I'm saying SQL DB. Um, yeah, I think here, maybe you... if I just, uh, change this. No, no, text no, real quick. It, yeah. It, it's fine. I'm just wondering, I'm sure people are also wondering, um, does the approach, cause one is an embedded table. So you're trying to pass the table to, um, you know, using some library and, and then you, you kind of, but is, is the architecture similar, whether you replace the embedded table with an SQL DB or an API to a database, would you say it's the same kind of architecture? Yes. Um, and, and actually, uh, so there's pandas, there's SQL, there's any retriever query engine that you want. And, and actually what I showed you in the, um, second example with unstructured is that we actually didn't treat the table itself as, um, SQL or pandas for simplicity because of the, the, um, the formatting, we just treated it as plain text. And so right. just imagine like, here's a node, which is a summary, a mapping to a bigger node, which is a bigger text chunk. And then that's basically what we did there. Mm -hmm. So if, if the, because, uh, one of the approaches before, you know, this architecture came out was you would effectively the first step would be try to insert your structured data into your database. And then you would mm -hmm. try to have this dual approach. I, I remember you wrote an article about this where, uh, the, you can go retrieve from the rag and then the other option for the model is to go retrieve from the database. Um, do you mm -hmm. see, is that a similar, uh, is that approach still valid now? Um, if the data, the, would you say there's a reason whatsoever to extract the embedded table? insert it into a database and then perform this sort of hybrid um, approach. I see. That's actually really interesting. I think so. I think there's absolutely space for both approaches. Um, the first approach, if you have a lot of structured data in general, and, and most companies do, then yeah, you absolutely should put things in a SQL database and then maybe have a tool to interact with a SQL database, uh, as well as a tool to interact with, uh, like vectorized unstructured data. Um, I think the specific thing about embedded tables though, within a document, and, and the interesting thing there is the <laughs> fact that um, uh, you basically, like a lot of these tables are not big, right? They're actually quite small and there's a lot of them. Like, and, and that's the thing. There's like a lot of very small tables and, and they all kind of are subsections of this overall document. And so it, it's a, bit of a slightly different data model than like a big table that contains like all your user transactions, for instance, right? Um, and so I think like, because the the relevance of this table is actually, uh, it's it's like relative to the, the document itself. Uh, that's why I right. think this embedded structure makes sense. Right, got it. So effectively, the you, you, what we're trying to do is, um, from, from a persistence point of view, obviously, when you run the core lab, um, certain things stay on. Um, certain mm -hmm. things, um, when you refresh the collab will disappear. Um, when you, 
do the embeddings, we store them in the VEX store for persistence, right? Um, mm -hmm. How is do we persist the extracted table anywhere if you're not storing in a database, or you only persist the reference to the table? The nice thing about this architecture is that it's very flexible, um, and so the the um, the embedded tables uh, can basically be stored wherever you want it to be stored. Uh, so it can be stored in a document store if you want, um, for instance, in a MongoDB or in like a, or or even in, in an existing vector database. Um, it can also be stored in a SQL database if you choose to. Uh, so it's actually uh, we kind of leave it up to the user. But the idea is like just uh, the the general principle is that. Um, with recursive retrieval, if you fetch like a user question and that has a reference to something else, we can fetch that something else and whatever that something else depends on in terms of data storage uh, is, is customizable. Right, so the table is effectively stored as text in a VEX store. Um, yeah, that's one option. And then if it's, for instance, a SQL database, uh, it'll just be stored as like a SQL database. Got it, okay. Right. Okay. So, so for people kind of wondering about um, the limitations of this approach, because I think it's getting to the point now where we have so many options. Um, even mm -hmm. Llama Index, you know, last time we recorded, we talked about comparing documents. Um, mm -hmm. Now we've got this ability with embedded tables. Um, someone can have CSV files. Another person's got stuff in the database. Um, from a production point of view, because I think that's something a lot of people care about, what what considerations should should be taken into account for this kind of use case, especially for scaling, hallucination, cost management, you know, just production considerations? That's a that's a great question. Um, I think to some extent we're kind of trying to understand it as well. I think some of the um I, I'm actually relatively bullish on this approach because I think it's a it's very general, and so I think we've seen users like kind of uh, think about like recursive retrieval in like variety of ways now, and and you can use it for kind of general rag use cases as well as like parsing embedded tables. Um, specifically for parsing embedded tables, I would say some limitations is one the quality of your table parsing. I think that actually matters quite a bit in terms of being able to extract out stuff. Um, two is how you actually uh, construct this document tree in the first place. Um, I think if you, so if you don't have a good data table parser or a, a good way to construct a document tree, this will probably lead to some optimal results. Um, okay. And so I think, you know, we use unstructured, for instance, for the 10Q because it was more flexible in parsing out tables. Um, there's obviously still room to explore how you can more cleanly <laughs> parse out tables. Like there's still some formatting and stuff left over. Uh, as well as like potentially if you OCR like a, a table or you get a, a screenshot of a table and pass it to a multimodal model, can that actually do better? Um, the quality of your summary as well matters quite a bit for retrieval. So if your summary is super non-descriptive, that table is never going to be retrieved. And so that I think is something that users would, would need to tune a bit. Um, and then of course, there's just some general retrieval questions like hybrid search, top K, that type of stuff. Got it. Okay. So yeah, basically. Um, and then the last thing would be about latency. What, what do you see in terms of, you know, people trying to build applications using this capability? Um, mm. uh, we did talk about speed of the passing. It's not necessarily the quickest. Um, so is this a, a more of a, like a wait for five minutes kind of process or is there a way to speed this up significantly? So the retrieval is actually pretty fast because uh, by default, you can just do vector retrieval. Um, and, and depending on like how you query the document, it's just a matter of like retrieving stuff and putting in the context, same as before, uh, via embedding lookup. And that's pretty fast. Um, constructing this this thing can be, uh, can be like, it can take a long time depending on the number of tables that you have. Uh, and the reason for that is one, the parsing, um, like how you parse out tables. And two, we actually use an LLM to automatically generate summaries for each table. Right, and and so that uh, can can add on a bit bit of time. Yeah. Right, right, and and the choice of model doesn't affect the accuracy much, or it does. Um, the choice of the model does uh, affect, like the the quality of the summary matters, and so if your model can't generate summaries, then then it, the the table won't be able to be retrieved. Yeah. 
Got it. Uh, any final thoughts on this? Anything else you think uh, people should know before they play around the notebook or they go uh, go through your docs to figure this stuff? stuff yeah, I, I, no, I mean, yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I hope um, if, you, if you have any questions or thoughts or feedback, please, please let us know because we're trying to improve the, the parsing and stuff as well. But generally, we've found that this to be pretty effective at querying uh, embedded tables and documents. Um, and that's the one thing. I, I wouldn't use this strategy for like, if you have a ton of like unstructured data in a SQL database, this is specifically the use cases, you have some documents with like embedded tables, right? And so it's like a common enough use case that like, uh, I just want to share some general tips to, to address this. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe. Thank you, Mayo. Cheers.